When we see such endearing footage of a young couple, we're quick to assume they must be very happy. But the internet can be quite deceiving. And in the case of Deja Jenkins Minus, this couldn't be more true. Aged 22, she had just become a mother. Her daughter was a few months old and she was over the moon about it. But her on and off boyfriend, Leonard Robinson, couldn't say the same. On Thanksgiving day, 2021, Deja was found dead in his apartment. Uh, Deja's neck was fractured, that she had over 58 stab wounds to her body. How did this happen? And what went through Leonard's twisted mind as he killed his girlfriend in such a gruesome way? This is the full story of Deja Jenkins Minus. Today's story takes us to Boston, Massachusetts. Boston is a big, bustling city of almost 700,000 people. It's the cultural and financial center of New England, and it's a place where people from all over the US come for fresh opportunities or really good sports games. Part of the Boston metropolitan area is Lowell, a town of 100,000 people created in the 1800s for factories. In 2021, Lowell was the home of Deja Jenkins Minus. She was was born in Boston on February 15th, 1999, making her 22 years old in 2021. If you look at her TikToks and general social media presence, you could tell Deja was a happy-go-lucky kind of girl. She always smiled, always had a nice thing to say, and just seemed to enjoy her life wherever it took her. She'd graduated high school with academic honors and was dedicating her time to college. Her free time, she always made sure she was by her family's side. Deja was incredibly close to her mother, Latoya. She said about her daughter, She's very outgoing. She's loving. She's a very uplifting young lady. But much like any young lady, Deja was also pretty active in the dating scene. Over the last few years, she'd been on and off dating Leonard Robinson, AKA Pole Body D Rose. That's right, he was a Boston rapper, also 22 years old, and slowly making a name for himself in the hip hop scene. Hey, EG57 Pole Boy Rose. Don't touch the favorite, man. Don't touch the stand up, boss. It was up. You already know I'm coming back with another one. This is a more bumpy vibe. Bobby vibe. Hey, 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 hey. It never looked like Deja and Leonard were in a steady relationship, but every time they were together, they did look really happy and in love. There was lots of PDA and the internet was flooded with clips of them kissing each other. So whoever knew Deja and saw those videos was happy. They were convinced that she was in a good place with Leonard. And when she announced her pregnancy, people around her were even happier. It was a dream come true that they thought would unite her and Leonard even more. Shockingly though, it would bring her down fall in the most brutal way. Throughout her pregnancy, Deja was super stoked, sharing lots of videos of her proudly caressing her baby. In September 20th, 2021, Deja gave birth to her daughter, Delani. The internet was flooded once again with pics and videos of Delani and her very happy mother. Deja's family was there to help her raise the baby. So they started wondering why Leonard seemed aloof about the whole situation. Most people would be very excited to have a month old baby, right? Well, that fall, Leonard wrote a worrying post on Facebook. He claimed he wasn't sure whether Delani was his baby. Apparently, Deja had been cheating on him, or he suspected her of doing so. In the same post, Leonard claimed that he wanted a paternity test done ever since Delani's birth. Well, there's a bunch of wrong things with this. Do you see how Leonard spoke about Deja? It's worrying that anyone would use those words to describe their partner, even if they're upset with them. Deja responded to Leonard's claim, also on Facebook. It feels a bit strange that the two didn't discuss the issue face to face and that they chose to make it public before solving it at home. According to Deja, Delani was 100% Leonard's. Deja posted this on November 24th, the day before Thanksgiving that year. That night, she visited her family in Boston with her baby daughter. Of course, Leonard didn't accompany her. By now, they were engaged in a social media feud that would have made things very awkward with Deja's parents. On the morning of November 25th, Deja returned to Lowell with her daughter and visited Leonard's place. Deja was supposed to return to her family in Boston that evening for the big Thanksgiving dinner. She was super excited about it. It was going to be her daughter's first Thanksgiving, and all her family loved her very much. 
This is why when Deja failed to return to Boston, her family got very worried. Latoya recalled, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what, but I knew something was wrong. Latoya and the rest of the family tried desperately to get in touch with Deja the whole evening, but her calls went to voicemail and her texts were left unanswered. This was very unlike Deja. And what about her baby daughter? If she was in danger, Delani could literally die. Two-month-olds are exactly independent. So Deja's family used the Find My iPhone to track her down. She appeared to be at Leonard's place in Lowell. The family didn't call the police, and instead, LaToya hopped in her car and drove to Lowell, straight to Leonard's home. But when she got there, she realized that the doors were all locked and the house was dark, so no one was in. LaToya kept coming and going, hoping she would notice some action in the house. When she spoke to the neighbors across the road, LaToya found out they'd seen Deja go inside the house along with her baby daughter and some diapers, but they hadn't seen her come out of the house. LaToya stayed up all night, watching the house and her phone, constantly hoping for a ping, letting her know Deja's location had changed, but there was no good news. In the early hours of the next morning, LaToya called 911 and requested a welfare check at Leonard's home. Around the same time as the police were arriving, Leonard's relative walked into the house through an open window. He went to the bedroom and seeing the door was locked, he kicked it in. Just before the police could find the scene, Leonard's relative found Deja's lifeless body lying in a pool of blood on the floor next to an air mattress. Uh, Deja's neck was fractured, that she had over 58 stab wounds to her body. It was the stuff of nightmares. She'd even been stabbed in the back of her neck and in her head. As they searched the scene, the officers found blood splattered all over the bedroom and the kitchen. When an autopsy was conducted, it became clear that Deja had been attacked by one person holding a sharp weapon at least 58 times. Also, she had defensive wounds on her hands and arms, and she didn't go down easily, and she fought for her life till the very last moment. Imagine the terror of knowing you're losing your life and you can't protect your two-month-old baby. Initially, police were completely clueless when it came to potential suspects. A grieving family is asking for the public's help in finding the killer of 22-year-old Deja Jenkins Minus. Police have said nothing about a suspect in the case since her body was discovered on Friday. Deja's family also couldn't imagine who would want to do such a thing to a young mother with a baby. Yeah, and the Jenkins Minus family has no idea why someone would want to kill this 22-year-old woman the day after Thanksgiving. And with it happening so close to the holidays, the pain is just unbearable. I just come forward. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not angry, I'm not. I'm more mad that they won't come forward. Latoya spoke to the local police and asked them if they had any leads in the case. They only said that the murder didn't appear random. Well, what about the house Deja's body was found in? Or the feuds she had with Leonard? There must have been some clues pointing at them. They just need to turn themselves in. I'm lost, I'm hurt, I'm numb. I'm... I'm angry and I want justice for my baby and my grandbaby. Latoya simply couldn't fathom that Deja could have been killed so viciously by her own boyfriend. On the afternoon of November 26th, Deja's family found baby Delani at their Boston home, almost as if she'd teleported there. They had no idea how she'd gotten there, but luckily she had no injuries on her body, just a drop of blood on her diaper. Most likely the blood was her mother's. Delani might not consciously remember the horrific event of losing her mother like that, but she will be scarred for life. Such trauma affects the mind, especially at such a young age. Then of course there's the trauma of learning how her mother died and who killed her. Two days after Deja's murder, the Lowell police had gathered enough information to make an arrest. They tracked Leonard down at another home in the city and arrested him at the scene. All right, relax, relax. He's not doing anything. Calm down. No, no, calm down. Calm down. You have to calm down. He didn't. Hold on. He's good. He's good. He's good. I got you on that dog. I got you. I got you on that dog. Yep. You're going to come over here. You're going to come over in the freezer apartment. All right, all right. Get your hands off me. Don't be touching me. 
It didn't take long before this news reached the media and everyone following the case. LaToya was quick to post on Facebook about it. LaToya stayed strong for the public eye, but imagine what she went through, learning that her daughter was killed by someone who claimed he loved her. This comes as we learn the man charged in the murder was the father of her child. Boston 25 News reporter Wale Alihu live in Lowell tonight, where the suspect will see a judge tomorrow. Wale? Vanessa, this is an incredibly heartbreaking story. So sad, I'm actually holding back emotions just trying to report this to you. But Middlesex County District Attorney's Office has confirmed 22-year-old Leonard Robinson of Lowell will be here at Lowell District Court tomorrow to face a judge for the Thanksgiving Day murder. Take a look at the very last Facebook post of 22-year-old Deja Jenkins Minus of Boston. On Wednesday, she wrote, my daughter will never need for anything and that she cannot wait to celebrate her first Thanksgiving tomorrow. Yeah, it's especially heartbreaking that in Deja's last post, she was happy her daughter won't need for anything. Sadly, Delani was left without both parents the very next day. She will be raised by her grandparents, forever knowing the brutal end her mother met. Just what has to go wrong for a person to kill their partner in such a frenzied attack? Leonard not only his girlfriend, he attacked her 58 times. Then he broke her neck, making sure she was dead. He just didn't want to punish her. He wanted to destroy her. Why? Because he was convinced she'd slept with other men and had a baby that wasn't his. You could have always just ended the relationship, Leonard. But she just graduated. She just graduated high school. She just had her daughter. She just had, it was it was just Thanksgiving too. As soon as the news of Deja's horrible death made the headlines, people from all over Boston and Lowell held a candlelit vigil for her. Dozens of people gathered outside of the victim's home here in Mattapan, lighting candles, comforting her mother, a 22-year-old woman, a new mother taken far too soon. The pain too difficult to put into words. Hugs turned into uncontrollable sobs at a candlelight vigil near the Morton Street housing development. Deja's family could get some closure after learning the terrible truth of her murder, but justice still hadn't been done for her. What we have in this situation, Your Honor, is that Deja is found in the house that he was living in alone, in his bedroom, which was locked when any witness or the police came to that location. What the medical examiner's office noted was that uh, Deja's neck was fractured, that she had over 58 stab wounds to her body by a sharp object. Leonard stood there, poker faced, behind his mask, no comment, no emotion. Latoya Jenkins was also in court, watching Leonard stay there, expressionless, and listening to all the horrors that he had done to Deja. She could barely contain herself. Robinson was held without bail. A probable cause hearing was scheduled for December 30th. Here's the catch. Leonard was already on probation at the time of Deja's murder. He'd been released on a bail of $5,000 following two gun cases in Suffolk Superior Court. The guns had been found on the floor of the passenger seat of the Kia Fort belonging to Deja. In an ironic twist, Leonard was arrested after the same Kia Fort was tracked on November 26th and 27th. After the gun cases, Leonard had been ordered to wear a GPS ankle bracelet and to respect a 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. curfew every day. So the police were able to track his exact movements from Thanksgiving Day and November 26th. Until 2 a.m., he was inside his home. This is particularly creepy as he'd killed Deja many hours before. Remember, she'd missed the Thanksgiving dinner with her family the previous day. Then Leonard traveled to various houses in Lowell. And just before 5 p.m., he cut off his ankle bracelet. However, he was soon tracked down and arrested. Outrageously, Leonard pleaded not guilty. He even pleaded with the judge to move him from the Middlesex House of Correction as he was in danger. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the court gave him no bail. Leonard had three previous convictions for violent crimes and an arrest for illegal possession of firearms. He was only 22. He'd known nothing but a life of crime and it culminated with the worst thing he could possibly do. Lots of people commented online about the shocking end of Deja's life. As of 2023, Leonard Robinson still awaits trial for the murder of Deja Jenkins Minus. Deja's family has a long way to go before they can get closure a family needs in such cases. Latoya might never recover from losing her daughter, 
in such a horrific way. And little Delani, well, it's almost too heartbreaking to think about what she will have to live with for the rest of her life. Deja's death is the sad reminder of the dangers of loving a toxic, violent, aggressive person. Leonard's lifelong history of crime was a red flag that Deja was forgiving about. Sadly, her kindness turned deadly. But Deja's friends didn't want her to be remembered as a victim. Honestly, I would love for her to be remembered as this amazing, goal-driven, hard-working mother that honestly would do anything to take care of her mother and her child and herself, for real. The world just lost that amazing person. Thanks for watching, you guys. I know, a truly heartbreaking case. What do you think Leonard's punishment should be for murdering Deja? And could the murder have been prevented? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And before you leave, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell button. See you next time.